Okay, hello everyone, good evening. Uh, glad to see you all here. I'm Grandmaster Alsham Aradi Badi and this is Exciting Sicilian with you. Welcome, welcome. We have people just could you please close the door, please? Thank you, appreciate it. Hello everyone in the chat and on on, on YouTube and Twitch. Glad to be here with you guys. This is my last stream and uh, live stream with Ben Simon. Not that I'm gonna miss it because I'm gonna see him soon when I will be back for the US Championship. I'll be playing the, I'll be playing in the US Championship. So I'm not gonna miss Ben because I'll be back in a month's time. So But after that I'll miss him because I won't see him for a few months. So that's okay. I can live with that, I guess. <laughs> Alright. So today I chose six games from the Olympiad and the reason was that Usually when I talk about things, uh, when I talk about different concepts, opening, middle game, end games, I learned chess in a classical way. I mean, I became a G I became an, uh, GM in a way that when I became an IM, I didn't even have a laptop for my, for my chess analysis. Like, I, after I became an IM, I won money to, to, to buy a laptop. Everything was handwritten, all my analysis, everything. I became an IM in 2004. And still using databases were not as common. You know, I, I was born in Iran, so having a laptop was, was, a, was a massive luxury at the time. So um, classics were very cl close and dear to my heart. And then I, after a while you start getting so good at this and you just remember everything. And then you realize that it becomes so repetitive. You want new positions. So I choose a very complex content for today, not because I just want to dazzle you with the kind of analysis or, or confuse you. It's just these things have been shown around all along repetitively again and again so let's do something new so olympia just concluded a few weeks ago uzbek team with with kids averaging age of 20, 19 less than 20 won the olympiad let's let's have a look at these some some interesting games from the tournament so the the most difficult result for the u.s team which finished fifth while being the favorite was this loss against in india b which they were averaging maybe 17 years of age or 18 years of age. And this game uh, between Caruana and Gukesh was actually very critical because Caruana losing with White really didn't help the match. Uh, well, we'll have two wins of his uh, later on, but um, the game was very interesting against Gukesh, who was on a hot streak going 8 0. So, uh, but again, it wasn't. It's not because of the match situation, but because this game is very interesting. So e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. I think at the very highest level, at the very highest level of chess, which is this game, uh, these guys kind of at the agreement that playing d4 and entering Sveshnikov uh, is kind of an accepted draw. Okay, well, we have people on the chat. They're saying hi to everyone. Oh, all right. Seems that everyone's happy with it. Okay, so uh, knight db five d six. So people do try to avoid Sveshnikov at the highest level these days. So I think that's why uh, that's why uh, Caruana went for bishop b five, and he's he's been he's been doing pretty good with this. Um, the only person who got their way playing. Uh, against Caruana was Magnus Carlsen who did well in the ma match in, in 2018 and uh, overall he has a good score against uh, Caruana so the only person I've seen so far to out prepare Caruana in this opening has been Magnus Carlsen so g6 is the most common response the movie 6 is play or I'm just adding that throwing that for you but it's you have to sit at the computer and make the moves based on that not not is not really something you easily can play over the board. Although the move e6 was Gelfand's main choice against Anna in their match in 2012. So it's not something that new to the highest level of chess. You be played in the World Championship matches, but uh, it's less common. So g6 is considered the more solid one. And I would assume that Gukesh really wanted a draw in this game, playing black on, on board one. I wouldn't say he wanted a draw, but he wanted to play solid, but playing the the most solid way. So castle was played by Caruana, bishop g7, and he took on c6. But this, here comes a surprise. Gukesh went for b takes c6. So d takes c6 is considered the, uh, the more uh, sort of a solid way of playing. Uh, so playing b c6, I'm sure uh, Gukesh had very deep repression here. But also, you know, playing chess, you have to play 
you have to be true to yourself. Oh, because my opponent is a stronger or is very well prepared, so then I'm not gonna play my own line. So uh, I think it's very, it's very interesting that uh, it's very interesting that uh, when you are young, and I think that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Uh, you try to be true to your principle more often. You know, you become less practical. And, and uh, I mean, in this case, he's practical because he does what he's good at, which is complex positions. Um, but it's good. That's why I always tell my students and all players that, you know, play true to your, your well understanding of chess, not because, oh, I want to play solid because this guy is high rated. If you have this thought, then you only are thinking about results, not about your own chess. And then you cannot be true. You cannot get, go beyond the point you are because you put the rating and play and your opponent above your own chess, and that's not the right way to do it. I consider chess being an art. So if I compare to successful artists, successful artists didn't create their arts for, for selling them. They created them because they wanted to create them like that. So they call me a preach. Okay, I'm not a preacher, no. <laughs> I'm just like this, so. Rook e1 and queen c7. Um, when I was doing analysis before the class on chess base, I said that people on the cloud have analyzed this to the highest depth and the move queen c7 is the, is the main choice. But a knight h6 is the, is the most common way of playing and the blacks plan to play f6, knight f7, d6 castle, and then once you go c3, d4, they capture and uh, play very solid, waiting for the move e5. So I'm gonna show you some line here, just, just to cover this, c, and then f6. The knight goes back to f7, uh, bishop e3 and d6, and I have, I cannot, I couldn't find my own game because I played in some some rapid or blitz game in Romania that I played h3 here. Uh, but anyways, this has uh, Carwon had another game against Vasily Grov on chess.com, uh, which okay, you cannot really say that's his main line. But anyways, he played the system and uh, yeah, it's a very solid position for for White as well. But I'm sure when uh, uh, Gukish was prepping this, he, he, he was sure that there is something here because I, I uh, when I was analyzing in my own way, because I play as white as well, uh, in my analysis, I think h3 is a stronger move. And after this, I really prefer white's position or even queen d2. I really, I, th I find it very hard to play the move e5 because in a lot of lines, I'm just putting it, it's not exactly happening here. But after like this, it be like these moves. There's always this problem of knight g5 weakening this pawn because you trade this knight and then who's going to defend this pawn? So um, because of that, I find it quite difficult for black to play this position. So it requires a lot of patience, a lot of, uh, you know, it, 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 here's the feeling. Uh, psychologically, it feels like you have, you have a target on your back the entire game because your structure is weak and you're sitting there, you have to wait for your moment. I would say not exactly a 16 year old kid sitting there in, against Fabiano. Although they have good nerves, these young kids, still it's not a comfortable situation. So I think this choice of queen c7 is quite smart going queen c7 and playing for compli complications. Yes, go ahead. I just had a question in that position uh, before you played queen a5. Uh -huh. No, I'm going to do this. Just push queen side and out. Just make it wide open. So the question was that if, what if black, I'm just going to repeat for people online. The question was why black, if, if black wouldn't go for the move e5, what would be your plan? You have to, you have to grab space. So in chess, grid is good when you grab space, not in material, but grid is good in a space. So. Yeah, that's the, you just keep grabbing space because black's biggest deficiency problem is that bishop on g7 and the fact that he doesn't have enough space because he hasn't pushed so many pawns and pushing the pawns, as you mentioned, could lead to some weak weaknesses. That being said, black always has counters. It's not that this position is like clearly better for white. In my opinion, practically, I wouldn't feel comfortable being black in this one, having a target on my back the entire time. So 
But again, some people, I think maybe a guy like Karpov would easily play this position at his best with that play. But it's not the modern way of playing chess, I would say. So, uh, so um, Gukic's choice is quiet. It's quiet uh, in accordance to modern way of playing. So you want you want dynamic equality. In old days, they wanted to play solid against the stronger opponents or people higher rated than them, so that they can minimize the. the um, minimize the gap by you know making solid moves but nowadays th these guys know deeply what they are doing and they can be faster so they can put more pressure on you so where actually the difference narrows is in dynamic so the difference between a top player and, and someone somewhat a little bit less less uh, 100 points below them is not in uh, in the statics well sorry is in the statics not in the dynamic actually it's been other way around so maybe a strong IM could get a draw against the GM by playing solid now they have more chance by playing more, 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 dynamic, more dynamic because more younger players are more inclined to be good at calculation. So it makes a lot of sense. Hello everyone in the chat, welcome. So queen c7, h3, the move d6 was played. These are all accordance to the engine and the move e5 is a very interesting move. I'm gonna put a uh, sign here for it. It's a pretty, pretty good move. Uh, everyone from YouTube and, uh, and uh, Twitter, sorry, Twitch, Twitter. Yeah, of course, yep. So e5 was played, this is a very inter uh, interesting move. Disintegrating the pawns, and then he plays d3. And here, I'm gonna give everyone a minute to think what was Gukish's move, which actually, I'm sure he had prepared, it makes a lot of sense. What does black do here in this position? I mean, maybe I snap. Well, then you can go back with your bishop. But I mean, I'm, I see what you're saying. But anyways, it's a pawn that you're going to lose in the center, anyways. Right. Maybe, um, yeah. So he has to complete his development. That's correct. But if I get to do this, and then these pawns become, if I play f6, uh, surprisingly, like for example, let's say I go f6. Let's say I just try to reinforce this. Right. And then surprisingly, this I I go here. Right. This and then I go knight c3. Knight at six to say I don't care, for example. And then all of a sudden, I become extremely active. White pieces, because of the massive lead in development, right. white's position becomes really, really, really good all of a sudden. So here, uh, Gukish did play this very interesting move C4, or someone in the chat said, uh, to prevent knight D2, knight C4. But more importantly, I cannot take on C4, because if I take on C4, and this is where the dynamic comes in play. Black just played f5 before, and black is just better. Right. Yep, black is just better. So uh, c4 was played in the game, knight c3, and the players were, were, were lashing out their moves. So basically, they were both in their preps still. c takes d3, c takes d3, knight h6, knight takes e5. Obviously, capturing on e5 leads to right. bishop takes h6. Yeah, sorry, just let me, <laughs> thanks. Um, Knight takes f5, uh, and then bishop f4 was put. So here, um, knight f5, bishop f4, they were both playing their preparations. Knight a4, and then f6. I am not so sure about this move. This is the first move I'm going to put a question mark, not that I believe it's a question mark, because my analysis isn't deep enough to say if I am really at the point that I can really say uh, I can... Um, I can overrule Black's play by saying it's just it's a bad move, but it surely doesn't really address what I was really thinking Black should do. I was thinking more of a bishop e6, bishop d5, things like this, and it seems that Black is doing all right. But there's also this knight c5 here, so maybe Engine would say take on b2 wouldn't be my choice. Engines say moves like this, uh, I cannot let this happen. Maybe maybe then castle first, rook c1, then bishop e6. Knight c5. Wait, so the, can't you take the c6 pawn with the knight, the other knight? Uh, what, here? No, no, if you take on c6, then I just take on a2. Everything is protected here. Okay. 
What was the question? What was the other question? No, so before they just used it, uh, like after, the, yeah, like instead of classes, people would just use it. And uh, like uh, if people just use it, then when Microsoft and if in the year called Queen C8. Queen C8, uh, this, this, Queen A4. Yeah, looks very bad. Yeah. Looks very bad. This is hanging. We are not castled yet. Well, I'm not so sure uh, still. I mean, after this bishop before, engine was very cool. When this is like, I'm not talking about the leeches engine. I'm just having the leeches engine to avoid blunders. So if I make a blunder, it will show that I, I, I made a blunder in my comment. But I don't trust this evaluation or whatever it says. But when I was looking in the cloud, it was saying this position is playable for black. But again, it's according to the engine. And uh, the way I see it, with my old school understanding of chess, what is way ahead in development has a good grip of dark squares, and I'm really having trouble making moves here. So, but I'm sure I was looking at the times. Walking into this position, Guka shouldn't just come randomly playing his position. You can, I mean, simply cannot do that against Caruana. So, um, I doubt F6 was a prep. He probably was on his own. But uh, yeah, engine says moves like queen b5, bishop b6, th things like this. Well, the thing is that he cannot play e5. Some people say, well, f6, e5 gets the control of the center. Th that's the problem. He cannot play e5 here because if he goes e5, then there's d4, and that's it. Game over it's because of the pin. And in the game, he castled, and then d4, and there's no e5. So that means it puts the entire concept of black's play into question because I have a bad bishop, I weaken this square, and I have not very good pieces now. So it's, it's a, I cannot really personally endorse this concept in here, the way black played it. So yeah, this remains to, uh, for further analysis, I, I, I'm actually import in the process of writing uh, an article about the Olympiad, and I might run the cloud a bit further there. So if that will come out in, with, with chess in format, you guys can see it there, or it will pop, so I'm sure that I'm not the only person who's, who's looking at this. So we'll see people would, will address this at, at some point but to me it's it, it is the critical moment in this game that I don't like this move f6 at all that's, so what, he that's what he played yes so this there d4 and then Gukesh goes g5 and here on I couldn't really follow what what uh, Caruana is doing for example this seemed to me like a no-brainer or bishop h2 or bishop c7, it says we're controlling the square. Seems like black is absolutely out of any move because I'm about to play like queen a4, and rook b1, uh, I mean all kinds of moves, queen d3. I just don't know where the pieces, black, uh, black's pieces are going. And if he doesn't take, say, goes queen b6, then just bishop d2, because in the game he played bishop h2, which is still okay. I think after this, he is still better. But I mean, Am I missing something here? Seems like a very simple way of playing. Of course, there are, there are things here you have to kind of make sure about there. B4, knight f3, queen f3. But again, <coughs> where is this bishop going? E5, rook c1. Again, where is this bishop going? Gonna cry. <laughs> What's that? Gonna cry. cry. Yeah, well. I would say rook to, rook to d. Yeah, but then uh, just uh, knight e4, now this guy is hanging. And rook back f8, you have to knight d6 or bishop e3 or so queen b3 check bishop, or sorry, queen b3 check and then bishop e3. Yeah, th th there is no score for the bishop. So, I, yeah, I, I, the, the, the again, I don't, because I have other games to show and uh, we have only an hour. So I only can say that I don't understand, I don't understand why he never played knight c5. I don't understand why Caruana, he never played knight c5 in this, in this position. So he played there, there. Now, for example, again knight c5, right? It's not as powerful now with the bishop on h2 because g4 is coming. Right. But it's still, knight going to well, c5. Push g4, of course. No, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's a lot. Still, you have to kind of go knight c5. Right, right. He, played, he played rook e4, then queen d7, queen c2, fine. Then here. And now it's not uh, any more strong because the queen comes to this uh, d5. By the way, this was a very strong move, queen d7. This was a very strong move. Regrouping with the queen on d5 right. is a very strong move because if I go back to c3, there's always bishop e7, c5 coming. So 
he found this he found the he found the balance for his position queen c2 knight there rook to e1 bishop f uh, here bishop f8 was played and uh and Carwana goes queen e2 which is also still dr drifting i mean I, I i would like to see some a3 before maybe but already it's very hard to play right. i mean engine still gives some advantage for white but i just don't find i find it quite difficult to play as white because whatever you do is very committal and it's not that easy to make him make him move here for for white in this position which move No, a5 gives this a square. Gives this move. I'm talking about white has a hard white has a hard time to play. Now white has a hard time making move. A3 like queen d8, it's, but it's still. I mean, he gives well, away. Also, how about uh, knight to e, e, uh, d6? Knight to d6. Knight d6 is not Does a good. Do which move? Not, which after a3? Like you mean? No, no. Knight d6. No, no. But just. Yeah, I understand, but I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not, no, it's, don't worry, it's, knight comes to e6, no, black is, knight is good, he wants to put the queen here. Right. Yeah, queen d5. Okay, no, that's something. Yeah, so, knight c3, queen d7 back, and then, uh, okay, again, rook d1, d5, something, again, he goes queen c4, queen b7, and what has no threat? And then gradually, suddenly he played b, b, b4, e6, and suddenly black's pieces are all functioning. Right. I don't see why you played the knight back to c3. It would have been better on c5. Well, now that now you open the bishop, so the b4 pawn tight. Yes. It's the game. I'm going forward through the game. Yes. Queen d7. Rook back to e1. He goes back to b7. He's repeating once. And then, uh, sorry. Let me continue this. Thank you. Um, uh, rook back to b1. They repeated a couple of times. And then he goes for a3, which is I understand with the team situation being difficult on board four. Uh, Domingos was losing in the Sicilian uh, as well against Sajuani. Uh, he was trying to play for a win, but again, this was not the way to go because a3 gives just a5 now and now after uh, And now after uh, the move uh, Hello MJ So now after this move all these pieces are suddenly active and uh, Queen knight a4 Queen d8 Caruana is trying to be active, but then suddenly Black is extremely active. This is structure is very strong and then queen d5 very strong move yeah this is this is the blunder this is the final blunder knight c5 is the final blunder uh, so um queen d5 and uh now yeah he has to go back yes so he has to go back and then well the point is that after this is just very hard to play right so uh, queen e2 uh rook takes a3 <laughs> yeah well very funny comments on on on, on youtube so um uh, Rook, rook to d1 and then yeah this was not just going well so anyways going back to the to the keep moment i don't i don't want to go through the entire game uh, yeah here is the point that he yeah got lost in all these complications with the f6 so really don't know why the engine likes this move queen c7 and this seems to be all according to the engine's best moves in the on the board right. yep and uh Knight h6 was played, knight takes e5, knight f5, and then bishop f4, queen b7, all according to the engines, and he played knight a4. All these are normal moves. And I don't know if this is the best black can do or bishop e6 leads to just that pressure. Why would be the trend? But apparently, I think we will see more of this coming because that's where it goes. Okay.
So not a great day for Caruana in that game, but then he had these two back-to-back -back wins after that, or maybe the one next, I'm showing sure next one is before that. This is a more inclined classical toward the English attack. So this was our bishop b5, which was an interesting game. And still I'm befuddled by the whole course of the game, and I have to a little bit dig deeper, but I'm glad I shared it with you. Now, um, let's look at this game of, of, of Caruana against the uh, Iranian Super G Maksudlu. Uh, this game is a very interesting one. I really liked it. Um, and there are so many correspondence games in it, which we're going to look at. And it has, it has a very interesting tactical battle. And this is one game that, although he lost that game and the U.S. team lost, but this was Caruana's win that win the match for the U.S. team. So um, the typical opening. And we have this very famous uh, position that, have been pl that has been very topical in, in the top level. Um, B4 is less common these days, but uh, I checked the Iranian players, the GMs, they, they played quite often, so they might have worked on it together. Uh, this is, uh, I think, is it a trend? No, 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 it's not, this is not the one. Oh, okay, here, okay, sorry, Caruana played, my bad, my bad. After B4, uh, this is the trendiest way of playing that was played uh, at the uh, at the candidates. Hello, Sarhan. Uh, knight e8, and then they go here f4, a5, f5, and a4, and it's a very long uh, theoretical battle which leads to an equal end game, but they both have to know it. Um, this opening been around since 2007. Uh, but here, uh, Caruana opted for something less forcing, and he played before, and he took on f6, which, according to my analysis, and uh, works with the uh, look at the uh, correspondence games, it's quite challenging for black, and it has some, some forcing nature at some point. So after the move, b takes c3, queen takes c3, knight takes f6, and he went knight a5, which is the best move. Otherwise, I mean, I have to make use of this square. Another move that is very common here is knight a4, and it's a very common uh, opening correspondence games. Knight h5, queen takes b4, d5, queen a5, bishop takes g5. Just this one is just remember, this is under attack. Queen this, and then um, this is uh, my court is to, to the participants in this class. Know that bishop g5 is a bad move, leads to a worse endgame, slightly worse endgame. Whereas d4, uh, or is it queen takes a5? Sorry, queen takes a5, capture d4 after bishop knight c6, bishop d6, all forcing. King b1, rook fc8, leads to a draw according to a bunch of correspondence games. When I say leads to a draw, it's a complex position where black has enough compensation for the pawn because these knights are not so great. And it's very hard for black for, for white to regroup. In fact, if black could have taken this knight back to the game, he could even play for a win. So yeah, this is the best way, in my opinion, to play. And if somebody knows that, it must be played. But after the move, bishop g5, bishop takes back on g5, queen takes back on g5, king b1, d takes e4. There's one move here for white, which I want to give everyone some time to think about it and uh, see if you can find it. That gives white a good edge in the end game. So let me give you a couple of minutes to think about it. What can black do? Yeah. And people are saying in the chat that they don't like to be befuddled. Okay, that's good. Let's stay away from it. So here white has a move that I don't give it a double X clam because double X clam usually wins a game, but this one is a very strong move that gives white a slight edge in the end game. Not Michael. I'm I'm talking to people online. No, not not Bishop C4. No. Nope. Remember, there's this move coming. But there's a very small tactical idea. It's not a tactic, but a tactical idea that the game that looks pretty good for Black flips it. What's that? 
you can a4? h4. h4, h4, I just moved the queen. So it's knight d4? That's it's exactly the movement, knight d4. It's a very beautiful move. We're using the lateral uh, pin. Now uh, we want to take this bishop and take this uh, knight, making, making it forced for black to go back with the queen to e7. Now we take we, we take this bishop, getting rid of this bishop, and after queen takes e6, f takes e4. Now in terms of material, the position is balanced. Black has black has a majority on the queen side with four versus two. Versus two. And on the king side, sorry. And white has a majority on the queen side with three versus one. How, um, now I'm going to ask one question though. If we are removing the queens, who is better? It's a very important judgment call. If we remove the queens off the board, who is better? White. white is better, and why? Because the man of the has to go. Uh, no, 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 not, not like that. I mean, think conceptually. Say there's no tactic. It's conceptually, white is better. And why is that? Uh, it's one of the reasons, but it's one of the minor reasons, not the major ones. So it's, but it is one of the reasons. He's got a better majority because black playing the move f5 is not an easy one to do. So because f5 I can take and the central passes are not great. In the, so when I teach this to you know, beginners and when well, I say beginners are people who are getting, get, get, to get, the, get the ropes around with the strategy, I tell them in the opening and middle game, we try to move toward the center. In the end game, we try to go to the edges, to the, because then without the queens on the board, your activities on the side, your opponent needs to, uh, to gravitate the things toward your pieces, to bring the pieces toward your majority, where you are pushing your pawns, is a, is a much, more, uh, much more difficult task. It's, it's much harder to bring their pieces toward uh, your piece to, to decide that your pieces are more active because it, it takes more tempo. Whereas when the queens are there, if they have a couple of pieces, they can come up with good combinations against your pieces. So, that being said, I'm going to give one example where the queens go off the board. This is a game in correspondence chess, and this is actually even more crazy. He has he has four versus one. Basically, he has two passes and one, and then we have three ones. And this one. Um, well, actually, I featured this one, I think, in, in my book, uh, co-authored with Sabina, Sherlock's Method, is kind of winning for, for white, and uh, there is only one miraculous defense, which I think black, even in the correspondence game, didn't find it. But the problem black has are three. The bishop, the bishop, the side passes, the, the, far, um, the further to the edge of the board uh, passes. What's the correspondence game? Yeah. Are the ones played where people are not playing in real time over the board games, whereas they just email each other the, the moves they have, and they have like 10 days to make 20 moves, basically, that's how it goes. So basically, they have a lot of time running their engines, and that's what uh, the correspondence games are. Well, they're essential for chess development of theory, because you know all these ideas, someone has to have a lot of time to do it, right? Or the board is not like that, huh? So, um, b4, f5, c4, king f8, king b2, and the problem again, because I have central pawns, it's very easy to move toward center, there's few tempi, whereas you see how much tempo, tempi it, it costs, the, this, the black's king on e7 costs to get close to the pawns. So king rook c1, king d8, c5, rook a7, bishop b5, and just gradually, you see now we are in an even e equal situation, but now white's pawns are far, far more advanced than black's. So he goes c6, check, king Okay, here, here's when the engine's work matters, because a lot of time you would think, I have to go forward with my king, but when you run the engine, you see that king b3 doesn't win, but king b1 wins on the spot. That's the engine work, basically. So, uh, yeah, and the black ended up winning this, uh, white ended up winning this endgame. So the move knight a4, though, uh, been around in, in over-the-board top-level chess, but... Uh, not as often because I think they had already figured out that d5, d4, which I told you. But a lot of people, more lower rated players, happen to not know that and go for that end game, which I just showed you. So if you are playing this, I would suggest you to test your opponent if they go knight h5. Sorry, if they go like this, go knight a4 and c after knight h5, queen b4, they know the plan d5, d4. Obviously, you have to spend time learning the other line as well. So, uh, um, Carwana went for g takes f6. So for strong players, I suggest you to study this. 
for weaker, I mean, I would say weaker, for, for, for club players, I suggest them to take, play knight a4. That's my suggestion. So for professionals. Yes, and people saying knight a4 is quite dif dif different. Yes, it is, it is true. So, okay, g takes f6, b takes c3, capture, capture, knight a5, as I said, this knight is heading here to take this bishop, which black is fine with because it's gonna force knight, the knight is pinned, I need to save, I need to save myself from losing material by taking on e7. Captures and queen goes to a5. Uh, some people are asking online if I move, if I suggest a more common knight e2, which was I told you the most developed line. Um, I would recommend that only if you you are willing to spend time memorizing 45 moves all the way to the end game. It's not my thing. I would I don't I wouldn't do that. But against a very strong opponent, I may end up doing it. Depends. But where I'm okay with the draw, if my opponent knows everything. Again, it comes down to the situation. White goes to a queen a5 and rook c6. And uh, rook g1 is the strongest move according to the engine. Uh, just, you know, getting ready to improve his pieces. Rook fc8, king b1, taking on, taking on c2 is not an option d2 bishop takes a6. And rook c1. Because if I get the rooks off the board, then I'm winning with the two a, a and b pawn and, and two bishops. Knight h5, rook goes to g2. So this is this was the idea. So I first I saved one tempo, and now the rook on g2 does the job. Also, it's eyeballing the idea of going rook gd2, putting pressure on this, is combining an attack and defense at the same time. Uh, some people are saying knight e2 used to be the thing. It used to be a thing, especially in 2007 at Waikanzi. Anand won a beautiful game from black side of, of that against Karyakin. And it used to be very trendy back in early 2000s, uh, late 2000s and early 2010s. However, it, the move at the top level is fading because when everybody is studying it, they know how to make a draw in that line with 92. So I was just answering a question people had online because I have to, I'm looking at the chat as well too. So queen f6 attacking this pawn, rook f2, I, I kind of, that's the move that makes sense, right? So this rook is doing a great job by bringing on f2. Defends so many things at the same time. So, okay, this is a very good question. What do you think of the move bishop g5 in the opening? The, 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 uh, I'm just going very quickly back to address that very quickly. Um, people are asking, in this position, the, the line with bishop g5. I suggest it for, to all of my students because most people do not play the... Uh, so if, if some people like to play English attack, I suggest, to, I just suggest them to play the knight a4 system. If they, want to, if they want me to choose for them what to play here, I suggest bishop g5 because for the most players below this level 2600 level, nobody takes their time to memorize queen b6, which is the poison pawn, which is, leads to a good position for, for black. So mostly they play the classical systems, which lead to a comfortable position for white. So if you are playing, there is a good chance your opponent wouldn't know, wouldn't play the move queen b6. So I suggest my, my students to play the move bishop g5. If but if they choose to play the uh, English attack like this game, then I am, I am an adamant, uh, 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 I'm, I'm a big, uh, uh, I recommend that move. Uh, I'm an adamant supporter and uh, recommender of the move uh, knight a4 here. This move knight a4. Okay, let's continue with this because I answered too many questions online. Uh, takes queen takes c3, knight takes f6, knight a5 again going there. We had this position already. We know what's going on here. Okay, uh, needless to say, this capture is impossible due to rook a8. Rook g1 is a very important multitasking move because now the rook ends up being here. The king will land on b1 because you just want to make sure that there's no tactic there. And remember, if white consolidates, having two bishops and this better structure on the queen side would lead to just simply better position for white because he has all the means there. So black should ha use the means of tactic to kind of stay current in the game. And I think this is where this is where he made a mistake actually, knight h5, because he gives this, this maneuver. Engine likes to move d5, and that's the most common line uh, played. I don't know this line very well. 
uh, and this guy's been 2700 and he's played this one twice before i'm sure he had done his homework before uh, just to mention the move it takes d5 is not possible because after capture capture i cannot take twice on d5 because i have a background issue he can attack me on the d file and i'll have problem so um they go moves like b3 d4 and the past results shows that in correspondence and over the board black has been doing all right so they move knight h5 two reasons either he was trying to play for a win because uh, we already know Corona did not have a good tournament so he was maybe trying, trying to take some risk to win the game or he simply wasn't confident in his analysis in d5 queen f6 rook f2 so far theory and he played queen h4 and this is a this is a novelty but and it seems that Caruana didn't know much about this move because the engine is not so thrilled about seeing this move and just says you can just go before and play it which is which is really odd but it's not as odd when you see game four where although white lost the game the, the pushing these pawns is is part of the game which is crazy that when i teach when i teach sicilia and say you go long castle don't touch those pawns as much as you can and then you analyze with the engine and you say oh cool before plus two and then i have to explain you know what you kind of have to know all kinds of techniques to to be able to consume that kind of knowledge um caruana is an e4 player so but okay caruana is maybe one of the biggest experts in the opening in the world took this good enough h6 and caruana positionally you know realizes his advantage so they repeat once he goes back queen e1 which is not the greatest move either but he's being very practical you know he understands that end game is good for him and his opponent failed to create counterplay you know this knight f4 knight f3 thing he didn't create anything so he made some moves here but somehow it didn't go through for him so queen e1 so not necessarily engine moves but what is on the right track he wants to trade the queens get that end game we, we just saw well not exact end game but two bishops and the majority he's looking for there c4 i'm not so sure if i like this move either but okay you play that f5 bishop f4 again he's he's trying to get the end game king b2 the sad thing about black's position what is the lack of the counterplay and the problem is that he has a very bad pawn structure queen f6 caruana back there rook f7 bishop c2 and now this is a fixed target black has no real because pushing the pawns will just this time weakens black's king i cannot really just go f4 g5 g4 queen d8 okay gives away the, the tactic tactical shot okay now it's all game over and now i cannot play queen f6 because of queen b7 so he, he goes gf6 this loses a pawn and uh, the rest is just too easy for caruana even if he's not in his best shape his best shape so yeah so it was a very interesting tactical battle and there's so many interesting games i added here i'm not going to go over it but so many games with king b1 and then uh rook fc8 here king b1 and then uh, yeah this d5 was expected but somehow white black didn't go for it so as we can see this level all this analysis all they work on these things and uh, comes down to one half a tempo basically very very yes in what uh, richter to not to play richter no, Richt no, no. Well, I'll ask him next time I, s I talk to him. Well, honestly, I'll ask him. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like a huge expert. Kind of yeah. The... Uh, don't talk to him often. Time, uh, time difference and also the fact that uh, these guys are professionals. I do my thing as a coach and everything. But I talk to him from time to time. Right now, he's, he's playing in the Turkish League. So if I talk to him, I'll ask him. Sure. And if, I, if I'm around here next week, Ben Simon's not going to be here, but I'm going to be here. So... I'll, I'll I'll make sure to address it but sure okay so I'm gonna go to the next game another another um, Bishop e7 ah there also I can explain this to you uh, on the Iranian team 
there's a grandmaster Idani. He just entered top hundred in the world, and he's a huge expert of uh, of uh, Nidor. He's playing like he's, since he was like sixteen, and he's like twenty six now, ten years, and he was like always up to date in Nidor uh, repertoire and prep. So, and they all prep together, so it could be that you know sharing files and everything. But it also could be that you know if you don't have the feeling for the position, you still cannot live up to the expectation of of your place. So, like for example, when I get the end game in, in Berlin, I feel very confident against any player. Whereas not maybe feeling the same in other openings. So it all again comes down to what kind of position you get. So he probably had the right prep to a certain point. He either, either forget, forgot, or he uh, simply doesn't feel that comfortable playing it. Oh, okay, so let's go back here. So this time, you must play this system, and he played knight h5. So he's the one who actually de deviates. He must. Goes knight h5. So knight h5, and uh, now, Caruana goes king b1, which is one of the common moves. Knight d5 is the most common, but Caruana probably had analysis all over the place with everything, so he just tried to play the lesser common ones because your, his opponent probably did not check this. Which kind of paid off because knight b6 is the most common move, and again knight d5 is the move, and here Caruana played queen to f2. It's not the greatest move on, on the board. Everything is playable, but the most important thing is that he's throwing off his opponent. Knight c4, bishop takes c4, b takes c4, and where does this knight land? A5, A5 yes, the knight goes to a5. Uh, knight c5 also is a move, but I personally don't don't take any interest. I mean, it's it's not that much pleasure to play this position to me. I'm kind of help. I, th I feel I'm helping Black, but the engine is cool. With, oh, sorry, the engine is cool with it. That's the only reason I I don't like online chess. Mouse slip. You know, in a real game, I never mouse slip. <laughs> so, and it actually. In, in 2020, at the end of 20, 2020, because of COVID, the qualifier for the US Championship was online. And if I had won my last round game, I could be in an Armageddon with, with Alex Lenderman to, to play. And the winner of that Armageddon would, would play the US Championship 2021. What happened was I was going to play queen to d7. I, hung, I dropped it on d8. The game ended in a draw. So, well, but it is what it is. I mean, it was the same. And it was a classical game. So. I got excited. Well, I, to be fair, I didn't see it was winning, but my intention was queen d7, which was a winning move. Yeah. So I wasn't as un sad until I realized after the game that it actually made a huge difference. But my intention was d7. So, um, so knight a5 was played in this game. Knight c5 is also a game, was played in correspondence games. Knight a5 was played by uh, Caruana. Uh, rook c8, uh, knight d5 was played, rook bishop d5, rook d5, all seem pretty natural and normal. Um, white only has one problem here, right? That's the knight on a5, because, yeah, well, if you get to play knight b7, knight takes d6, that would be fantastic, but it doesn't seem as easy to, to achieve to play knight b7. The, so the first move comes in mind is to play queen c7, right? You defend the pawn, you don't let the knight come to b7, and uh, your plan is to improve this time, which is probably you want to play f6 here, or maybe some f5, depending on the situation. Obviously, the first look, we just look at this, these two pieces, the knight on a5 and the bishop on e3, are superior to their counterparts in the black's position. But, this pawn makes the huge difference. So th that's why I was very surprised. I was very surprised. Okay, people are asking online, wasn't the knight just hanging on a5? Okay, I have to explain it very quickly. The knight th is not hanging because after queen takes a5, bishop b6, queen b4, a3, and oops, the queen is trapped. So just adding for people online. So, so uh, knight a5, rook c8, covering this is square, knight d5. Uh, still cannot take on a5 because of knight takes e7 check. Bishop takes d5, rook takes d5. 
And I was very surprised seeing this move played by, oh, here is the, 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 the author. The author is here, yeah. Yeah. I think he was embarrassed. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, I should zip it then. I cannot continue talking about this because I'm sure he, the author is here, yes. The, So, so I, I think queen c7 was uh, the way to go. Uh, but then giving the chance of this knight coming back to the game seemed a little bit uh, not, not the right way to go. By the way, for those who were, uh, yeah, yeah, Fabiana was here. So, well, I'm not going to get to ask him firsthand later on that Wait, what was the deal. Was What's that? He does, I think. I think, yep. Yeah. Well, but these guys have to travel a lot playing tournaments. So take, I was very surprised with letting this knight getting back to the game. Uh, and look, this is, I, I was wondering if this move knight b7 is actually stronger. Capture, capture, queen c7, knight d6, then rook d1. Looks like pretty strong as well. Uh, but anyways, this also looks pretty good. And... Uh, this knight comes to, to the game via c6. Seems that uh, black missed something really big here. To me, it doesn't make any sense to let this knight come to the game because white had everything in the center, right? So you had to make sure that you don't just let the white pieces get in, into the motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, play the five with the knight c6. Okay, now I cannot play fe4. Why couldn't I play fe4? I forgot. H4, right? No, no, H4 goes. Yeah, H4. Now I have 97 check. Because not, the queen cannot cover this score. Yeah, that was it. H4 and the 97 check is coming. Yep. So, rook C8. Queen c5, and this is just game over. So king h8, takes the pawn. Yeah, the rest is just a matter of, I mean, you cannot take here because of knight f7 check. And just, yep. The, this is really hopeless. Pawn's running here. Knight f6 takes, and then uh, rook f7 doesn't work because of knight d5. Rook g8, this is hanging. These are all, everything's hanging, so e5 is probably not good because of knight f4. No, e5 is not good. I just, I think I just pick up the pawn. And then a6 is hanging, everything's hanging. This end game, the a pawn will be decisive. Anyways, how are we doing on time? I would be happy to take questions because I will not be able to complete the next game that will at least need 15, 20 minutes. So I'll be happy to answer your questions. Any questions for me? Yes? Uh -huh. So basically, white has A, B, C, and black, and white also has F, G, H. Okay. He's missing the E pawn and B pawn. Yeah, I know, I know the structure. Okay. So, from you were talking about end game a long time earlier in the lecture, is that structure better for white in the end game? It all depends on the situation. There, I, there is no concrete. There is no. There is no. There is no. Uh, exact answer to that question that I mean depends on the further pieces are where because you know in in French defense I'm just let me show you very quickly in French defense it happens all the time like people play this opening yep. and take queen takes d5 at gf3 I mean I'm just making one of the just playing one of the lines I mean, castle, knight c6, knight b3, knight f6, knight takes d4, knight takes d4. I can play queen takes d4, I go to the end game. Well, well, if it was right, everybody would have played this, whereas nobody plays this, actually. Everybody tries to keep the queens on the board to play for a win as white. So they just go, you know, capture, and then bishop d7, for example. This is pretty all right, because white's pieces are 
black spots are quite okay. Actually, I have a win in this position myself from black side. Well, obviously my opponent didn't play well, but uh, no, it, this you cannot just say that. Well, now if I remove all the pieces and, for example, keep the default for white with the rooks, then yes, then you have a majority that which is easy to push. Whereas if black takes the d pawn, is not as you cannot say be as confident to say that. So in the rook end game, if I am controlling the d file then yes it's very good for white now if a minor piece in game i would say it's easier to play as black so it all depends on the pieces you have on the board okay. that's the answer to it yeah do you have any questions ben online uh no i mean there's a question that asks do you take questions from the chat i was going to i mean we have one question uh there's one question about which what I consider in Sveshnikov as, as Droish. Um, I think nowadays, after the match between Caruana and Carlson Car Caruana, I think most people are just really, this is the only way to go for the play for the win. Although, probably at that level, it's already been, it's already been solved. But I really, it, this used to be something, but nowadays it really it doesn't lead to anything. There's very little to, room to play for, for, for white here. A6, they used to play, they used to really take this one seriously and they were hoping that there is something for white but the more they played the, the lesser i see things for for white here so that's what that's what people try to avoid that's i'm sure if it was going to happen speshnikov karwan wasn't going to enter this position i'm sure about that okay um thank you everyone i hope you enjoyed the lecture and uh for I'm going to be here next, next Tuesday. Ben's not going to be here. So as I said, we're not going to miss Ben. But that's okay. We're, we're going to be okay with that. And that's it for me, Ben. Anything else? No, it's been really great, Alshan. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. My pleasure. <laughs>